Okay, you know, and welcome to index law and an introduction to indices. You've already had a little a bit of a look at this, but um, in more specific detail, when a product includes the repeated multiplication of the same factor, so 5 times 5 times 5, or 9 times 9, 9 times, times 9, if it's the same factor being repeated, indices can be produced, to, you, you can use them instead to write it more simply. For example, 5 times 5 times 5, can use it like it can be written as five to the power of three. This three is the indice. It's called an indice. Okay, and it, and we are able to write things in indices to express them more simply. Same as this x times x times x times x times x. Instead of writing it all out like that, we can use an indice and say it's x to the power of five. Okay, having that idea. If we were to write these in expanded form, it says a to the power of 3. That would be a times a times a. On the other hand, if we had a question, x, y to the power of 4, that would be x. Oh, whoops, didn't draw that right, did I? x, y times x, y times x, y times x, y. As soon as I start to combine numerals and, uh, sorry, uh, numbers and pronumerals with indices, it changes a little bit. 2a to the power of 3b to the power of 2 is the same as writing 2 times a, 1, 2, 3, times b, 1, 2. Okay, that is each of those in expanded form. Okay, when we look at these ones here, we need to write each of the following in expanded form and then evaluate. So that's this, this first one here is the same as writing 5 times 5 times 5, which is 5, 5 is 25 times 5, 125. Okay. The next one's a little bit important. It's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Now, if I don't have a calculator, it's important to note that negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So I'm multiplying positive 4 by negative 2 in the next section. It's positive 4 multiplied by negative 2 becomes negative 8. Negative 8 multiplied by negative 2 is positive 16. Positive 16 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 32. So if you see what I did there, I did each step by step if I didn't have a calculator. Because it involves a negative, it's very important to note that that negative may change, the, the combination of two negatives will change the next multiplication of product. Okay, um, next I have, oh actually I didn't mean to do that to the power of 5, I might do it to the power of 3 only because it'll be more simple. Okay, there's just a bit too many in there. Okay, 2 fifths to the power of 3. Okay, it's the same as saying two fifths times two fifths times two fifths. Okay, two times two is four, times two is eight, five times five is 25, times five is 125. Is there a number that goes into eight that goes into 125? Nope. So that is its most simple form. Okay, write of each of the following in index form six times x. X, X, X. Okay, how many X's have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4. 6, X to the power of 4. This next one here, okay, it's important to deal with the numbers separately to the pronumerals. In the first one, I only have 1, 6. In this one, I can see I have 1 and 2, 8. So it's 8 to the power of 2. And I have 1, 2, 3 A's. A to the power of 3. And I have 1, 2, 3 B to the power of 3. doesn't matter if I write it like it is as the example or if I write it as index form, but you can see the way in which index form is a lot more simple and concise. And that's it, guys. That's basic understanding of index law.